Welcome to the Sound of Movement podcast, our Christmas Eve special. That's right, it is Christmas Eve in Australia here. And we are wrapping up this week about motivation, goals, and mindset, talking about how we pro- reprogram our thoughts using meditation, visualization, and affirmations. Morning, everybody. If this is our first show together, my name is Yanni Bormeister. I've got my brother, Rad Bormeister, across the table from me and behind the mixer, the voice of God, none other than Richard Lillies. And we are Unity Gym and the Unified Movement System. We turn driven people into athletes. Big shout out to everyone joining us on the podcast this morning. Uh, make sure you've given us a Christmas present of a five-star review. That would be amazing. Help us grow. And if you're catching the replay on YouTube, take this opportunity to smash that like button and uh, leave a comment about uh, your favorite motivation hacking tools, meditation, things like that. And uh, if you haven't already, both people should jump over to the UMS Movement Mastermind Facebook group. Join the group, join the discussion. We've got a bunch of people joining in live. Morning, Lee. Morning, Christy. And anyone else on the group who's joining live, let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from so we can have a discussion. Conversation is always more fun than talking into a mic. <clears throat> Rad and I are going to share our top three reprogramming your thoughts tools today. Uh, we're actually going to share two bonus tips at the end, uh, but we'd love to know what yours are. Let, let us know in the comments. What do you use to send to yourself? What do you use to get yourself on the right frequency for achieving your life's dreams, aspirations, goals, whatever you call them? How are you, Rad? I'm great. Christmas Eve. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling the Christmas cheer. We've been playing uh, Christmas carols in the gym all morning. I've been, I've had some great conversations with our members. People have been telling me, people have been coming up and thanking me for what they've achieved this year and what we've done for them. And uh, it's been a really great morning, to be honest. Yeah, it's yeah. Re- it's uh, it's been really nice watching so- the social media channels, the uh, the Instagram and Facebook looking at all the posts that people are doing at the end of this year where they sort of reflect it's a, it's that time for reflection about what you've achieved yep. and how far you've come and yep. you know the other thing i find really interesting is how hard it is to convince our members to take a little downtime because <laughs> mm. they're so you know in it, they've got so much momentum and in the flow with their training five six days a week and yep. we're like you know we're locking the gym down we want to we want you guys to take a bit of time off and they're like no nah, we're coming in and training you know uh, stav and i this morning both um kind of had a little bit of a put our hand on on will's shoulder this morning i uh, will i know you listen to these podcasts lately uh and we were we were trying to tell him that a week of not being all fucking guns blazing for productivity is is not a bad thing it's yeah. a good thing out of an entire Just year to disconnect. take a week yeah. off from the productivity uh train <laughs> you yeah. know so will if you're listening to this unplug yourself and uh wind down a bit is brother. that will brownlee will, yeah. yeah yeah hi will yeah. uh yeah look and it's it is very important it is very important and i like to use this time to actually disconnect from my usual rat race and uh, and workflow and just go deep on reflection, first of all. I think that's very, very important. Look at what you have uh, achieved and, uh, and give acknowledgement to that and, uh, and, and practice, you know, a little bit of um, gratitude. And then uh, spend a bit of time just writing down, brain dumping what you want to do next year uh, for the next 12 months. And then, you know, we use the, the strategy, goal strategy tool to really break that down and wireframe that so you've got a bit of a plan and execution. And then as we spoke about yesterday, we then uh, go ahead and write down affirmations. Uh, some people call, like to call them commands, but affirmations which <clears throat> essentially are going to uh, 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 um, get you thinking the right way <coughs> to achieve what you want to achieve. And it does start with needing, you know, you need to really identify the type of person that you need to be, the type of behaviors that you'll need to be addressing, the habits that you want to build, you know, and and then start reframing any, any negative uh, thoughts that come up around those things, you know. Uh, a big one for me over the years has been public speaking. I, I'm, like most people, you know, I used to be, quite terrified of public speaking and uh, and one of my affirmations that's ended up in my uh, daily affirmations list 
for the last decade has been that I am a great public speaker and that I give a lot of value and I enjoy it and I take any opportunity to do a public speaking event that I'm offered. Um, and uh, it, it really helps, you know, it really helps. And we're going to go deep into that. But the first thing I want to talk very quickly about is a little bit about the science. We'll go through a couple of key points that we teach our guys in our um, 28 day intensive uh, presentation. Uh, which we do here at Unity Gym. We will be doing it online. Hopefully, we'll get the course together next year. That's what one of our big goals. But basically, your brain is a supercomputer that can be reprogrammed. And much like a laptop or a smartphone, as the world around you evolves, it will need updates to stay relevant. And, you know, your you and your ambitions change as you grow older and as you learn about new things. Uh, and... Uh, you need to often, uh, often you outgrow your operating system, just like your, your, you know, the apps uh, on your phone outgrow the operating system on your phone and the software, you know, and, and eventually, you know, if you're using, if you're running, anyone who's running a, a, a Gen 1, 2, 3 or 4 iPhone at the moment, or, or anyone who's running a Pixel 4, <laughs> which is what we've got. They get they they really get left in the dust and they start to struggle and they start to have glitches and you know I, I like to think of negative thoughts and negative thought patterns destructive thoughts uh, self sabotaging beliefs they're they're glitches you know they're they're o the operating system not keeping up with where you're at right now you know <clears throat> and so the first thing we need to get you to think about uh, today is that your brain is much like a computer that just need from like very regularly needs to be updated and and updating happens through the way you communicate to yourself. It happens through the way you talk to, you, to, to, to yourself, about yourself, or to other people. You know, everything, communication, word, and written word even uh, uh, more so, is very, very powerful in reprogramming your thoughts. The more you say something, the more you start to believe it. And this is, this is a proven fact. It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not something that we're making up. MRI evidence suggests that certain neural pathways are increased when people practice regular affirmation, meaning you, you repeat something over and over again. Uh, despite the compelling science behind affirmations, though, they aren't magic. So you, you do have to uh, uh, repeat something quite a few times before it starts to really impact your, your brain, you know? Yeah, well, look, I think the, I mean, the first step the first step that you really need to do is to ask yourself if you want more or not. And as you get older and you get wiser, if you just look around you and if you look at uh, any examples of anybody that's achieved something from nothing, they all say the same thing. They all say you can have whatever you want as long as you work for it. So if this is what the people that have got the things that you want are saying, you know, there's nothing really stopping you. But the first thing that happens is you have to make the decision that you want it. And then you have to accept the amount of work that is going to go into getting it. And in my experience, getting something that you've never had before that is completely out of the realm of who you are and what you've achieved in your life, it is an insane amount of work to get there. And <clears throat> you know, one of, the, one of the concepts that really changed my life was the, the 10X rule from Grant Cordone which the concept of it is, is that if you want something, you should work 10 times harder at it than you think you need to work to get there. And only with that kind of a mindset will, will you actually get there. And that, that really changed things for us. Like we were, it caused us, we, we thought we were working hard before yep. we did that, read that 10X rule. <clears throat> and then we all looked at ourselves and just went, man, we need to do more. And we, we went in on an insane amount, level of, of, of effort that for what other people, but then you, then when you're smart about it, then you start doing things like you, you, you start looking at yourself going, oh my God, I'm so stressed. I've got too much on my plate. But then you start prioritizing and you start removing things that actually were just distractions that weren't leading you towards where you wanted to go so that you could put 10 times of your effort onto the things that matter. And so this is this is a part of that. It's a part of this idea of, you know, you, you, you want to, you know, if we relate it to health and fitness, you, you want to become flexible, you want to become strong, you want to lose fat, you want to become energetic, you want to learn how to do the splits or muscle ups or whatever. You, you have to reprogram your mind. You have to start acting in a way that, um, you know, this other concept, right? Act 
like the person who you want to be acts. Don't act like the person who you are now. Yeah. And if you want to do that, it all starts with your thoughts. And if you want to change your thoughts, well, you're going to need to reprogram your mind. Yeah. And if you don't hear this stuff and you don't l start looking for examples, man, you're, just, you're either going to one of two things. You're either going to let life go by and... Um, um, you know, live a life where you don't really make um, massive, ever achieve anything in, massive in, in, in my eyes anyway, in what I would call massive. And that's okay. There are plenty of people that say, man, I don't want that. I don't want to work that hard. And I want a life of people talk about this simple life and the happiness. And, and who am I to say that that's wrong? No one yeah. can tell you that that's wrong. But just be real about it. Yeah. If, if, you know, and, and I think that's what one of the biggest problems that people have is that they complain about what they don't have but they're not acting in a way that's ever going to get there and if that's you if you're complaining or you're upset if you look back on 2020 and realize that you still haven't achieved what you wanted well you need to listen to this yeah and you need to start changing and it starts with this stuff yeah that's exactly right as we say in the presentation your thoughts become your beliefs your beliefs become your actions and your actions become your results if you're frequently getting caught up in negative self-talk it's time for an update, that's what Lee Clements is saying. My hardware needs updating. Uh, we like to call the physical body the hardware, and the uh, and the thoughts and the the, the um, subconscious brain the software. Uh, but, but you know, you know, Lee, I'd, I'm going to call you out on it a little bit here. Like you've you've putting some smiley faces on there. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be talking about this as a laughing matter. This is so much more serious and relevant than what you think. And if that's really you, if you're saying my my hardware needs an up updating or my software needs updating then do it don't don't laugh about it don't make jokes about it do it because i'm telling you right now that's exactly what we all did here and we 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 went through it it's it's funny the way it happened in our business and our lives because it filtered down from people who had done it before us for yanni it filtered down yanni yanni worked with a business mentor that richard and i didn't work with yanni um Yanni was the one that had the bandwidth for that when Richard and I were, were doing most of the personal training and Yanni had moved into a different role in the business and he was the one that was called out by his business mentor of saying this stuff, you need to do this. So Yanni was exposed to it, Yanni started working on it and then he called me out on it when he was making progress and I wasn't and I started doing it and then in the same way Richard was called out on it. So it, it filtered down through us but we all... We all went through this. We all went through these moments where we all resisted it. The ego resisted it. You resisted it when Kerwin told you about it. I resisted it when you told me about it. Richard resisted it when I told him about it. But eventually, we all just, if you're honest with yourself, you've just got to really go, wow, I've actually never done this. I've never done this work. And I can't ever say that that doesn't work because I've never done it. Yeah, you know? that's right. You, 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 have, you have sort of dog, a very dogmatic belief structure around how the brain uh, emanates uh, the thoughts and all this sort of. And it's very interesting because I, I mentioned yesterday I was in a, a, a counseling session uh, and um, uh, the psychologist that I'm working with went into a lot of science behind uh, what we're talking about here. And she explained how... The, the, the vast majority of your thoughts come from uh, assumptions, you know, that, that, that you've created based on your experiences and those thoughts cause a behavior, you know, yeah. you behave based on something that you think, but the thought comes from an assumption yeah. that was provoked by experiences but has no factual evidence whatsoever associated mm. with it mm. and we lead our lives largely on assumption yeah. and there's, there's no rea fact or reality there yeah. you know in 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 reality the exact opposite to what we believe has as much chance of being true as what we believe yeah. you know and and that's how we're basing our our behaviors and yeah. our and our actions and that's what's producing our outcomes and our results you know and and it makes you start to think holy crap you know like that's really really um quite quite scary and as as i said to you earlier in the in the um podcast series this week um, the Waking Up uh, book really highlighted to me, <clears throat> and we're going to talk more about this in a moment um, uh, because we use the meditation app Waking Up, which we believe is really, really good uh, as our first, our first sort of mindset reprogramming hack. But the, it, it, there is really no such thing as freedom of thought. 
You know, if you really believe that you are having free thought, you're 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 a little bit delusional because all of your thoughts come from Im implanted beliefs that have come from your upbringing, and it's a very hard thing to get your head around. But very few, you know, um, very few people have chosen their past. You know, their past was sort of thrust upon them by their parents, by their culture, by their society, by their religion, by, by all these different things. And you were sort of pulled through it. And that's made you the person you are today, good or bad. And that has led to the thoughts that you have, you know. And, and um, uh, but, but the great thing about it is, is that you can change this. You can actually implant thoughts, you know. You absolutely can. And I think like what I, I want to just keep reinforcing is, this is so much work to do. This is not the kind of thing that you just make a decision to do and then it happens for you. You need to work on this, work on it, work on it, work on it. And it is not an effort like anything else that you'll go through. We're not talking about a physical effort. We're not talking about telling you that you have to dedicate half an hour to, to stretching every day. We're not talking about that you need to lift heavy weights. We're not talking about that you need to go and get another degree in order to make this change. And that's not what we're talking about. It It is effort in a different way. It is effort in a way that everything that Yanni just described there, these thoughts that come in and that, that um, influence the way that you respond to things and the way that you act, you can s listen to this and say, wow, that really had an impact on me. I'm going to make a change and you will go away. And this process that Yanni just described starts immediately. You walk out on the road like uh, like this was a really big one for me. This was really big for me. Reading the book, um, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. Yep. Um, that book completely changed my way of thinking about wealth. And that's what the idea of it is. The idea of that book is that the first step to creating wealth is to change the way that you think about it. And he gives the best example that I think, because I could relate to this so much. He says, most people that aren't wealthy, when they look at somebody driving in a BMW or a Mercedes next to them, they immediately have a thought of, oh, what a fucking privileged, self-entitled prick, you know, like there's a thought that gets that's associated with somebody driving a, a six figure car. And I when I read that, I said, Jesus Christ, that's what I do. When I see a BMW, my immediate thought was negative. what was negative yep. was oh, look at this fucking self and look at this silver spoon. Like what a wanker, you know, like, that's that's the thoughts that went through my head. And he said and he says, if you're thinking that you are immediately rejecting wealth. You are pushing it away from your life. You're like a negative force to it. You're like a, it's like a positive to a positive magnet. They will yeah. never, ever, ever come together. And he says the very first thing that you have to do if you ever want to be wealthy is you need to change that thought to when you look at that person, you start thinking positive thoughts. So for example, for me, when, when I catch myself, if that was the program that clicks over, I, I used to say to myself, well, hang on a minute. I wonder what that guy did to get that car. I wonder what kind of sacrifices he made in his life, or she, he or yep. she. I wonder, I wonder what they did to get there. I wonder the kind of work that they did. I want, you know, and you reprogram yourself for that. But that process, man, did that take me time to do. And I don't go through that thought anymore. I don't see a good car now. And ha I've reprogrammed myself. When I see a nice car, I immediately start to feel a sense of, um, attraction to that, yeah. not not um, not a not a repulsion, and yeah. I really meant like think about as I'm saying this, is this you? Because the truth is, it's probably the majority in the people of the world that go through this, and it's a coping mechanism, and it comes from a lot of things. It comes from our upbringing. A lot of a lot of it comes from our parents that that said to us when we were younger, "Oh, those guys driving BMWs are just." Well, it you know, comes from a societal thing that yeah. where you're implanted from a young age, money is the root of all evil, yeah. and he goes through a lot of that. Yeah. You know, you're you're groomed to see wealth as evil. It's in yeah. the cartoon Scrooge yeah. McDuck. You know, yeah, like that's all right. of yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. the programming yeah. as a child. The the villain is always a wealthy the rich, person. The rich person. Um, yeah. um, um, Burns from The Simpsons. You yeah. know, yeah. Robin They're, Hood, right? You know, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. And and so it's just it's just culturally programmed into us that yeah. we see wealth and as and villain, yeah. power as the villain. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's 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 true. It's one of the first things. If you if you want to change your financial status, it's 
one of the things you have to change. You should read that book, even if you're not interested in changing your well, financial status. That's, because that's, just, that's one of the bonus, the bonus tips we're going to give today. Okay. But let's get into it because we're running out of time and, and we, we could share stories all day long about our experiences. But I want to give you guys a couple of actual tangible steps. I want to give you the tools. So the very first thing that I've found, and this is probably the hardest one to actually commit to. Now, af reading affirmations is probably, probably the hardest, but... We, what, what, the first thing we have to do is turn the noise off. Yeah. You, in order to make, you have to make space <coughs> in your head, in your mind, in your thoughts for new programs, for new thoughts. And the very first step, I believe, which what Rad and I have found very successful, is that you have to turn the noise off. You have to shut everything else off. And we tried many different methods to do this. And the, 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 the one that worked for us is uh, 10 minutes of daily meditation. And we use an app for that. We use the Waking Up app by Sam Harris. And I've tried many meditation apps. I've tried uh, probably all of the top meditation apps. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to bum steer people down trying different things. I strongly urge that you go down the path of Sam Harris waking up. We don't have an affiliation with him or anything like that. And it is a paid app, but you can get the first five meditations for free if you if you just get the app. And then if you want to go beyond that, f the first five affirmation uh, uh, daily meditations, then you've got to pay. And all of us, both Rad and I, did the first five for about a month <laughs> you know you do them until you get sick of them uh, I've just found and you don't need an app to meditate but if you've never meditate um, uh, you've never been good at meditating then it is a uh, I strongly advise it because it helps to be guided through the process it is not an easy thing to do if you have a noisy brain and uh, and that is what I believe to be step one Step one is just to start a habit every day of daily meditation. And what Rad said just before is really important. If you go down this rabbit hole with us, then you, which I strongly urge you, you, you do next year, then you need to dedicate, I believe, about 20 to 30 minutes a day to this every morning every morning the first thing you do when you wake up and if that means you have to wake up half an hour earlier than you do right now then so be it but here's something very important that i believe if you don't have half an hour if you can't find half an hour in the morning then i question whether you've got a life you're a slave you're not living so just think about that if you say oh, i don't have time or i can't do that or i couldn't do that i question whether that's true you know <sighs> if you can't find a, a, a 20 to 30 minute period in your day every morning to spend reprogramming your thoughts for a better life then you don't have a life yet you're, you're a slave to whatever you're doing i reckon it's more powerful to even just talk about just the first step which is 10 minutes of meditation and if like because you know it's all it's always the way right like people people find it hard to go from zero to hero in one step so if we even just <coughs> talk about the first step if you can't find 10 minutes to meditate a day then you are a slave mm. and um i would call you out on it 10 minutes of meditation is more valuable to you than 10 minutes of sleep yeah um, a hundred percent. So a hundred percent. You're not going to achieve anything in ten minutes of sleep, but you will yeah. achieve a huge amount with ten minutes of meditation. Yeah, that's right. You know. That's right. And what I do, guys, because I really want to be switched on for it, I don't just sit up in bed and meditate. I go and have a cold shower first. Every morning I have a 90 second cold shower, irrespective of the season. In summer here, it's the, the, the water's probably lukewarm. In winter, it's freezing. Uh, but that is part of my daily ritual. It, it's, there's many health benefits to ice baths and cold showers. I'm not going to go into that. But that is what I do. And that's the very first thing I do. And then I make myself a coffee. And then I do my meditation. And actually, what I'm doing right now is I go for a run for a half hour to an hour or a, or a, a brisk walk very first thing I do now and then I come home straight away cold shower make a coffee sit down I'm meditating and reading my affirmations and uh, that is the very first step because you have to make room you have to make room for what's to come you, you it's going to be very hard to, to just shove new thoughts into your mind when everything else is so loud and noisy and and uh, I, I believe that uh, it's, a, it's a really, really good place to start. Now, we'll rip through it because we're, we're coming to an end. The second step is uh, affirmations, daily affirmations, commands, whatever it is. And, you know, I've always said whenever, whenever people come into Unity Gym or come into our online coaching program, I'm always happy to share my affirmations. Uh, if that helps get them started so they can see how I've constructed it. Over a, 
uh, uh, almost a decade and a half, it's gotten shorter and shorter and shorter and more succinct and more succinct to the point where, you know, my whole morning ritual is on one page and on the other page is my annual plan and the strategy that's going to get me there. And so it's very easy for me to review and I have that printed and laminated a couple of places. I also have it on my phone so I can always access it no matter where I am or what I'm doing in the world. And, uh, and that's, just the, the it's taken a while to get it like that though you know i used to have like a five page annual plan and i used to have a huge strategy and it took me a half hour just to read through it and it was just really unproductive but as i've gone further down this rabbit hole productivity and efficiency has become an absolute paramount for me so i've worked on getting it really really succinct and really nice and quick and easy if i can't do it in uh, 20 minutes then it's probably not going to get done and that's the attitude I've, I've sort of formed uh, because my morning ritual now is, you know, a run or a walk. And if I run, it's half an hour. If I walk, it's an hour. But I do the same distance every day. So I burn the same amount of calories, get the same similar amount of steps. And uh, then I, um, I get home, have my, ice, uh, my cold shower. I do my uh, meditation. I do my affirmations. I do a little bit of visualization, which is the third key. And visualization doesn't have to be a, um, uh, a vision board, which Rad and I both do. Do you still have your vision board? Not at the moment. Not no. at the moment, no. V vision, My vi last vision board, almost everything that was on there I achieved. Yeah, that's so. right. Vision, the vision board is literally a collage of, of just visual cues that are going to keep you hardwired to think about the Sorry. things you want to achieve. Sorry, I rephrase that. Yes, I do have a vision board, but it's now a family vision board. Yeah. See, my vision board has become very much spread out all over the place. Like if you come into our studio yep. here, even the images behind, if you're watching on the, um, on the UMS Movement Mastermind, in the background we have you. Unity V Live Video, we have Unity Gym, the, all of the branding, Unify Movement System, the Sound of Movement podcast, all of the branding is visualization for me because these are the things that I'm striving to improve. And, uh, and I have quotes pr printed around the gym. I have uh, our, our um, mission, our business mission and our personal mission printed here in the studio. Uh, it's all visualization for me, you know. I have a um, an eighty thousand dollar credit card bill framed on my on my um, uh, shelf above my office desk, uh, which is a vision for me. It's a reminder of where we were, where we've come from, and that's how I use vision um, uh, visualization now, you know. But I do have a uh, pin board at home, which I intend to turn into my next vision board for next year. And it's a very, very powerful thing. And so just looking at those things for a couple of minutes every day, just to remind yourself of your goals and what you're doing, you know, is the third um, tool that Rad and I and Richard use. So let's just repeat those again. Meditation. And until you're doing 10 minutes of meditation, I wouldn't bother going to step two, which is affirmations. And affirmations are... You know, one word sentences or phrases that are going to align you to the things you need to do to be uh, to achieve the goals you want to achieve. And so I'll give you a couple of examples of example morning affirmations, uh, which we give to people who join our 28 day intensive. I commit to completing my 28 day intensive program despite how busy I am right now. I will check my ego at the door and I will be open minded about learning new things. I am patient and enthusiastic about my health and fitness journey ahead. I am 100% committed to my goals, no matter how long it takes to fully achieve them. I'm accountable for the health of myself and my family and always lead by example. So you can see that those examples are very much aligned and tailored towards someone who would be coming into Unity Gym and starting a new exercise program. They're all about hardwiring that person's brain and that person's thoughts in the morning to achieving what we need them to achieve, which is to give 100% to the program. Now, we also give a couple of evening affirmations, and evening affirmations are very, very useful because the last thing you think about at night is often the first thing you think about in the morning. So the evening affirmation examples are, I'm fully prepared for tomorrow with clarity on what I will do immediately after I wake up. I'm extremely motivated, and I anticipate tomorrow with positivity and excitement. My bedtime tonight is, and there's a blank, and I'm rising at blank to give myself eight hours of optimal sleep. 
I'm aware that getting eight hours of sleep increases the likelihood I achieve my health goals. Regardless of how long it takes to fall asleep, I will be positive and energetic tomorrow when I wake. So these are all things that are helping to pre-frame that person for being uh, achieving the best of their ability the next day, the following day. They're pre-framing their thoughts, their mindset, okay? And this is how affirmations work. And when you combine those three, meditation, affirmations, and visualization, it becomes an in insanely powerful tool to um, p uh, point you in the right direction and build some momentum towards your goals. Yeah. Without the it, it's like driving at night with, uh, with no headlights on. It literally is. Yeah, it you know. really is, honestly. You When you start doing this stuff and you get on a roll... Personally, I think it's like driving somewhere, but the engine doesn't start. You actually have to get out and push. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's it's phenomenally powerful. Phenomenally powerful, you know. Now, the last two bonus tips that I want to give you today, which uh, I, I think have played a huge role in our, uh, in our success, is that we committed many, many years ago, almost 10 years ago now, it would be 10 years ago now, we committed to reading 10 pages of a personal development or business related book, whatever it is that you wanna get better at. If it's get more wealthy, it'll be a wealth finance or investing book. If you wanna get better at relationships, it'll be a relationship or psychology book. You know, If it's just personal development, business, whatever, you choose, you choose the theme and you commit to reading 10 pages at night and, you, and that will usually get you about uh, a, a book a week, maybe, a, a, sorry, a book a month. Uh, and, um, and, and 12 good books a year. That will have a profound impact on your life. Uh, and there are many ways in, in, in the modern world to do that, to consume content. You can listen to Audible. You can read the book. I like reading the physical book and listening. And, uh, and that, it will expand and grow. You know, my, I, I now usually will get about 100 pages a day done because I listen in the morning during my walk or run. I don't listen to music. I listen to either a podcast or an audio book. And at night I read. And, uh, and so I'm just consuming a lot of great content you know which really really helps because that'll level you up and the other uh, tip is to exercise to exercise every day because exercise has incredible uh, power over the the, 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 um, the physical body and also the mental you it will change the way you think it will it will build confidence in you it will do all sorts of things it will charge up your body with healthy hormones it will slow down the aging process. It will do all sorts of amazing things. So if you're not exercising every day, some sort of exercise, whether it's a bit of mobility or stretching, whether it's a run, a walk, a strength training session in your gym or your home gym at home, UMS, whatever it is, uh, that's the fifth and, um, and second bonus tip that we use to hack our motivation. Because in and of itself, exercise is something that will absolutely optimize your motivation in everything that you do. You got anything to add? No. That's Except it. for Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. We won't be here tomorrow. This is our last show for the year, actually. We will, uh, we will see you all in 2021. So have a great Christmas. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for all your support. And um, yeah, we love you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a huge year. It's been a big year of growth for us on all of our channels. It's been a huge year of growth for the UMS Movement Mastermind Group. Uh, we, you know, we want to just give a huge shout out to everyone who's joined and who's active in the group, who's helping other people out. Massive shout out to everyone who's joined our UMS online coaching program. Very big. And we're going to do a, uh, an annual wrap up over there. Uh, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, no. no. okay. No. Yeah. Uh, this is it. This is our. This is our Merry this Christmas. Is our this is our sign off. Official sign off. Our official Merry Christmas. All right. So guys. thanks so much, everyone. We love you, and um, of course, we're going to be, you know, active uh, here and there, commenting on people's questions over the holidays as we can. But you know, this is the one time of the year where we are going to take a week where the three of us have a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, we'll still be training every day. I know I will. Um, and, uh, but yeah, we'll see you all uh, we'll soon. We'll be back at it Monday, January the 4th. Yeah, Monday, January the 4th is when we're officially back in the office. Now, get, remember guys, uh, someone very wise once told me that vacations and holidays are not 
to uh, to uh, recharge from the past. They are to prepare for the future. So let's take this time in preparation for what's to come next year. It's going to be a massive year. It's let's go. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.